never should have called you. You never should have come, but... Quickly, come inside. Come on. We don't have much time. I mean, I, I don't have much time. He'll be getting back soon, and when he does, I can't be here. <laughs> what a shit show. Here, please, just come sit down. I'll finish packing. I know what you're thinking. All those times you told me to leave, why now, right? Or, or what did he do this time? And it's not that. He doesn't hit me or scream at me or call me a whore anymore. He's different and I know how that sounds, but I'm not saying he's a changed man. I don't think he's... God, I sound crazy. This is crazy. How do I explain? Well, one night, the man I married left to get a drink, several, and he, he never came back. Well, he did, but what came back to me the next morning was someone who looks like him, smells like him, moves like him, is exactly like him, but it's not him. I've never been more sure of anything in my entire life. Shit, I keep losing count. Fuck it, I don't have time for this. I just, I'll take all of it. <laughs> He's never been so good to me. And I've never been more scared of him. I mean, I've tried to leave him. He always comes back. I left him in the desert. I... Oh. He should be back any minute. I don't know what's taking him so long. I can't clean up all this mess, but I have to at least... Fuck! Oh, shit. I just... We just need to put a little distance enough, not even that much between me and him. We can do that, right? I mean, I have to get out of here. He reads. You know he never used to do that. He, he pays attention to what I say. He gives me gifts, just little things, things that he says make him think of me. It's all the things you're supposed to do. Get it? He's, he's checking off boxes. How do I explain this? He's like a well-trained lion. You know, maybe he knows all the tricks in this routine, but he's still wild. He's still dangerous. There's nothing I can do to make him feel less unsafe. I hope I don't have to use it, but, but it's better this way. You know, being prepared, I, I don't know what he wants, what he's capable of. He's don't you see? He's not human. Hey, honey, that was quick. Was it? Seems like it. Well, it doesn't take long to run to the mini mart. No, I, I guess not. What are you doing? Oh, um, I was just going through some old clothes and seeing what I could get rid of. But what do you think of this shirt? It's very nice. Aren't you going to say hi to our guest? Hello there. You remember them, don't you? We used to see them all the time. Kansas City. Hi. Right. Well, they were just helping me go through some things and decide what to keep and what to give away. Isn't that sweet of them? It's very sweet of them. Maybe now would be a good time. I don't think so, Ben. Um, why don't you just put the bag down and come sit? What is all that? I thought you were just getting eggs. I got you these. They had those at the mini mart? Where'd you get those? Um, why don't you just sit down and, um... <laughs> What's the occasion? Did you know that strawberries are an aphrodisiac? Maybe our guest would like some? You don't like it? No, it's fine. You wanted eggs? No, no, I'm all right. Yeah, I can make you eggs. How many eggs do you want? Ben, please, just sit down, all right? Ben's been reading a lot lately, haven't you? Yes, I have. Why don't you 
Okay, tell them what you've been reading. Oh, which book? I don't know, whichever one you're reading right now. Well, I'm not reading right now, I'm with company. Sure, but you're in the middle of one, you left off somewhere? Oh, I'm in the middle of very many books. Then the most interesting one. Um, well, I, I've been reading a lot about human fertility. For instance, one of the primary signs of female fertility is a, uh, a rise in basal body temperature, a change in cervical mucus, and a change in cervical position. Oh, there's also male fertility to consider. One of the primary indicators there is a change in sperm motility. And I've been reading this volume on early historical surgical advances. In the last chapter, John Hunter, he performs a treatment on a man's scrotum. All right, that's enough. Um, actually, maybe you can make me those eggs now. What is that? What? In your pocket. I hope you're not about to be smoking. I hope you're not about to be telling me what to do. Wouldn't dream of it. About those eggs. How many you want? Just one. How would you like it cooked? Scrambled. I think I'm gonna get some air. Okay. I'll, I'll take out the trash. No, leave it. I can do that later. It's all right. I can do it. I insist. Okay. Hey, Maggie. Yeah? You know how I feel about smoking. Don't worry about him. He'll be all right in there. When he says he's making eggs, he's making eggs. It's very literal these days. I did love him, you know. At one point, I think I was even in love with him, but you know how that goes. I've got something to show you. You've chosen a path that's too narrow to turn around and too dark to find your way out of. Maybe you do. For the longest time, I thought that I was the worst thing that could ever happen to me. <laughs> or nobody was ever gonna sabotage me or hurt me the way I could. And then I met Ben. I saw him across the room and I, I wanted him. You just could tell by looking at him that he wasn't gonna take shit from anybody. I mean, those, those broad fucking shoulders. I wanted him, so I got him. It wasn't love at first sight, it was just lust, but it felt so in the moment. I'm not sure if it was worth it. So fucking mean all the time. I didn't think that it could get any worse. And then somehow it did. reeking of cheap tequila, stumbling into bed. I mean, those were the good nights, the quiet ones, but... My husband is dead now. 
And that thing back there in the trailer, it has his body. It has his brain, his memories, his... Forget it. It doesn't matter. On the one hand, I've always felt powerless. I've never felt able to affect any change. But on the other hand, I feel like I'm always changing. You know that thing they say that every seven years all the cells in your body are replaced? I mean, it's bullshit, but I was obsessed when I was a kid with that idea. Like it was some sort of naturally occurring purge. Like I could never fuck up too badly because I'd be new again over time. I know better, but still what I expect to find when I turn around is a trail of dead versions of me. You know when you're a kid and the whole world is in front of you, but you get older, you know, and you make choices. You choose one door and you leave 20 others closed and those parts of you that could have been, those possibilities, they just die. Life backs you into a corner. You can't get by without making a thousand tiny decisions every day. Maybe that's why I'll always feel powerless. Too many missed opportunities. Too much of the wrong thing. At the end of the day, I guess it doesn't really matter. I can't run away from what I am. I can't run away from what's coming. Especially not now. I went to the drugstore this morning and I got a pregnancy test. Positive. We should go. Don't mention this. Just reading. Hey, your eggs are getting cold. Thank you. God, I've left such a mess. Here, that's it. Maggie. Maggie. Yeah. What? You're not going to eat these eggs. Later. Hey, you got anything you want to tell me? I don't think so, but oh, God. You know what I read today? Um, crazy story, murder-suicide in Riverside. Did you hear about this? Yeah, um, happened late last night. Husband and wife, you know, most cases in the US. Uh, man's the perpetrator, but not this one. Wife did it. Um, history of battering, though, so maybe it's less surprising. Less surprising. You don't think so? Well, I think it's unfortunate. How, um, how quickly, how frequently things turn to violence. Sure. I mean, there's always another solution, right? There's always a solution without aggression. <laughs> Funny. I remember watching you smash a man's face in Bakersfield. Do you remember that? Man couldn't turn his eye to the side, needed surgery to fix it. I remember. Yeah. Do you remember the feel of bone fracturing against your knuckles? I do. You should. It's happened often enough. Maggie, there's no excuse for the things that I've done. Hey, should you be doing that? Should anyone? No. But should you? <sighs> it's gonna be like that. Hey. Look, I'm just looking out for our best interests. Not ours. What? Nothing. What is that? What is that? Oh, what the hell? It's just aspirin. Aspirin isn't recommended for pregnant women. You're pregnant. <laughs> You're pregnant. 
getting it. I knew it. I knew it. And saving this for this occasion, this is just um, sparkling cider. It's nothing stiff, of course, because we got to have a toast. A toast to the mother of my child. <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible to even be able to say those words. I mean, Maggie and I, we've been living together in this goddamn trailer for a long time now. And that whole time, it's just been just the two of us. Just the two of us. For years, it was just the two of us. And I've never felt more alone in my life than when I was with him. I still feel that, that isolation. I mean, but there's something else now, too. The, the feeling of eyes everywhere. A new kind of fear. I never felt that before he came along. Whoever he is. For my part, I have not been the man that I should have been. I have not been the man that you deserve. What did I deserve? What do you think you could give me that I didn't already have? I'm not saying that what I had was good. At least I knew what it was. Things can change. Things will change. I can change. You can count on that. I found him in the woods. I was used to his benders nights where he'd be gone and I wouldn't know where, but this was different. And so when he came stumbling naked from the trees, I, I knew something terrible had happened, but I didn't know he was gone, replaced. I, he was so disoriented, I sat him down right there, and he couldn't even string three words together. I was too scared to call anyone, so I just put him to bed, like a little kid. But he's not a little kid, he's not a... Like a fucking lunatic even saying this, but he's not a human being. He's something else entirely, and I don't know what's growing inside me. Because we're on a precipice here. We're on the precipice of something new. Something beautiful. And I swear to you, I'm going to do whatever it takes to keep the both of you safe. So here's to the next step. I'd be lying if I said I didn't let it happen. I don't know why I did. I just think there was a part of me that wanted him. Again. I knew what I was doing. I knew, and still I kept going. I knew he wasn't what he was supposed to be. That he was other. But I spent my whole life feeling so other that it almost felt right. Thank you.
feeling that it was good, simple, easy, didn't last long. Underneath the surface was some hidden drive, some ulterior motive, something that made me feel like it wasn't just me and him alone, engaged in something casual. It was purposeful. High stakes. Irrevocable. fear and excitement. Those feelings were both there, beauty and terror. And I thought, I had to see it through, whatever that means. I wish I could take it all back. Maggie, you hardly touched your cider. She never ate these eggs. You're right. Thanks for the eggs. They were delicious. Try to leave me in the desert once. <laughs> Just loaded me up in the truck and drove us out about, I don't know, 30, 40 miles out of town. She's dropped me there. This is where I was when she got back. I was seated. Just so. And I, uh, I sat here like this for what must have been an hour, maybe two hours. All I had with me was this, uh, this handful of coins for some reason. And I just counted these coins over and over and over again, just waiting. Maggie to come home. And then... She walked through that door. How did you... How did you... Stop, stop! Stop right there! I don't want you here. Do you understand? I don't want you in this space with me. But I'm your husband. Don't say that! 
That's the truth. You are nothing to me. Where I am, where I go, has nothing to do with you. Do you understand? I don't understand. Well, I'm gonna need you to do your fucking best, all right? I don't know where you belong, but it's not here. Maggie. You can't be with me. No, 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 no. I, I, I have to be with you, because we, we are bonded together now. My husband would never say anything like that. Who are you? I'm your husband. What's your name? Ben. What's your name? Ben! <laughs> Do you remember the earthquake? Yes, at, at our first house. What happened? It was a 6.7. To us, what happened to us, our house? There was a lot of shaking. There was, there, there was so much shaking that we were sure we were gonna sustain a lot of damage, but the, uh, the shaking stopped. There, there was one broken plate, that was it. And? <laughs> we never felt so lucky in all of our lives. I, I went to clean up the shards of glass. I cut my hand clean open. There was a lot of blood. You took me to the hospital. How many stitches did Ben get? 18. He got 18 stitches in the palm of my hand. He? I. No. I. No. Who are you? Where is Ben? What have you done to him? Why are you here? Put something inside you. What? To put something inside you. To put what inside me? Baby. I don't know where you came from. I don't know what you think you're doing here, but you won't get anything from me. You think you didn't just come into my home, threatening me, telling me what you're gonna do with me, to me, to my body. You don't get to touch me again. If you blink in a way that bothers me, I will make you regret it. Do you understand? Say something! Regret. Yes, re regret. Like, like I'll make you wish that you could undo it. Take it back, you'll be sorry. Sorry? Yes, sorry. What are you not getting? What are you? I don't want you here with me. She never tried anything like that again. Leave me in the desert. I think we found a way forward together. Hey, I want to show you something. I mean, we're not really sentimental people, Maggie and I. This is probably the extent of it. Mostly Maggie, of course. I would have never thought to do anything like this, but now that she has, I'm kind of glad she did. Come on. Let's see. I remember this. It was our wedding day. I remember every single detail of this day. I remember the shape of the clouds in the sky this specific flush on Maggie's cheek. The cadence of her voice when she said her vows. I remember how this shirt felt on my skin. It was linen. But all these, these details, they're, they're removed from me. They're distant. It's like these pieces fell into my hand that I don't know how they got there. I don't know where they came from. I, I, I don't know how they fit together. <laughs> this is a good one. This is the first time Maggie broke up with me. Let's see. Dear Ben, I'm sorry for how long. Blah, blah, blah. She puts in some niceties here. Let's get to the good stuff, huh? I can't do this anymore. That's the main thing. We were in love. I will always have love in my heart for you. 
but Santa Fe was almost unbearable. Waking up every morning wondering how I was going to get through the day. I can't put into words the dread I felt. That is true. I saw that in her eyes. Please know that in spite of everything, I don't think of you as a bad man. See, I, I think that she was trying to spare me with that. Trying to lessen the blow of her words. I mean, why? Why do people do that? Why don't you just come right out and say what you mean? Because sometimes saying the honest truth will get you decked in the jaw. This time I thought you might kill me. There was no telling what might set you off. Look. Yeah, photos, I see. Look. The house in Halifax? Yeah, it is. I was very unkind to you. <sighs> I'm aware. What? These? No, these were a good memory. One of the few. Yeah, we had a lawn then. <laughs> and we were so insane about it. Constant weeding, watering, mowing, fertilizing. This was a, a pretty perfect April morning, and we were standing in the flower bed. I said something, I don't remember what. You said no. What? You said no. Why'd I say no? Because uh, I asked if you loved me more than the crocus. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I said no, and you sprayed me with the hose, so I started. You started screaming. Well, I mean, I, I was laughing. No. No, 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 you, you were screaming. Uh, sure, but I mean, it was like laughter. We were, we were having fun. Fun? Yes. Fun. No. Screaming is a response to fear. It's a response to danger. Not everything is so black and white. Sometimes it depends on other things, context. People play and make jokes. Ben knew that. He was a bad man, but at least he wasn't a stupid one. You're calling me stupid. There it is. I see you. I see you. Bumbling around, pretending you're one of us, scraping your fingers around inside Ben's brain. Come on, Maggie. I mean, look at these memories. Mammoth, Duluth, the Sinclairs, the Christmas lights on Myrtle when you told me you loved me for the first time. For Christ's sake, you know that wasn't you. You recall everything like facts out of a history book, and that's as close as you'll ever get to any of it. That is as close as you will ever get to any of it. Just say it. Say it. Hey, you know what? I'll give you this, okay? You're really great at all your little tricks. Now, really, like like that firm handshake you do and, and the eye contact, it's so disarming. And the, the way you repeat what other people say, like blah, 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 niceties. And yes, that is sweet of them. And all the dozens of domestic duties that you never forget, like, like, like checking the tire pressure or taking out the trash or doing the dishes and the eggs. <laughs> Can't forget the eggs. You really mastered that stove top, haven't you? I see you taking down notes on every little thing like you're in some college or some shit, but you're not. You're here, 
in this godforsaken trailer with me just living life. People don't take notes on that. That's how I know that not only are you not Ben, you're not even one of us. So what exactly are you? You don't even taste like him. Don't be ridiculous. Maggie, I quit smoking. <laughs> oh my god, you see what I mean about the mind games? I got a theory about your precious notes. You want to hear it? No, I don't. I think that you need to write everything down to help you make sense of the world. I think there's so much raw information knocking around in there that you have trouble making useful connections between things, which is essentially what humans do. You know, I've been reading up on memory. Did you know that our memories function not for remembering, but for future decision making? So the brain doesn't care if it recalls things perfectly. It's all construct. It's malleable. We're susceptible to manipulation and suggestions, but not you. Maggie. You're like a goddamn tape recorder. <laughs> Impeccable recall, but like I said, no connections. Maybe you weren't capable of making them. Is that it? Is that what it is? <laughs> Tell us, is that it? Is that what it is? Why are you so shitty at being a person? Tell us the truth. What's missing? What's missing? I mean, you are the truth. The truth is that you're weak. The human body is fragile. Human mind is even more fragile. This whole human experience, it's fraught with logical inconsistency. And I'm not talking about exceptions here. I'm talking about everyone. I'm talking about everything. Any little distinguishing feature that you find unique, it's at best ordinary. You are just a collection of cells on a planet of seven billion people. But hey, good for you. You know that this world ain't full of magic. You know that it's not imbued with some kind of meaning. That's beside the point. Carl Sagan, huh? Pale Blue Dot speech, you know that speech, right? What, what does he call it, the, uh, the lonely speck floating in the cosmos? Because in the grander scheme of things, this planet is infinitesimal. It's a speck of dust on one of these photos. It needs to be wiped off the surface. And you think that's bad? That's not bad. It's not good. It just is. You just are. And this baby... No! Absolutely not! Now listen very carefully. A friend is gonna load me into their car and take me to the train station. And you will never see me again. And if you have anything to say about it, I will put a bullet in you! Go on. Come on. Pull the trigger, Maggie. Huh? What do you think is gonna happen here? Hmm? You think you're gonna get me out of your way and then you're just gonna be living the dream? Come on, Maggie, you're smarter than that. When are you gonna quit running? Shut the fuck up! Do you need to put a hole in my head? Huh? Is that what you need? Look, nobody here's stopping you, Maggie. I just... <laughs> I just need you to know that this is a narrative of your own creation. I'm gonna dispose of this. One witness. Um, we only took a couple of photos the day of, and they are all pretty crappy, so my sister, wanting to do something nice, she, she arranged this photo session. It was horrible. 
We were so stiff and awkward with the photographer telling us how to stand and when to kiss and the exact tilts of our heads and shoulders. At first, I remember thinking, at least we're in this together. But after a while, do you know the feeling when something completely mundane begins to build into a sort of horror? I mean, there we were, with his arms around me. And not just this stranger watching us, but also this mechanical eye capturing something other than what we were, because he would never stand there with his arms around me like that. And I thought, is this real? This thing that's happening right now? We drove home in silence afterward. He cracked open a beer, then another, then another. I don't know how many he went outside. I didn't see him again until the next morning. He was passed out on the lawn. And if I hadn't realized what a mistake I had made by marrying him before that moment, I had by then. <sighs> He's been out there for a while. that sound. It's, uh, it's very encompassing. You know, it's only the males who sing. And when they sing, it's so loud. It's uh, about 120 decibels. It's as loud as a bug is going to get. That's so loud, that can cause permanent hearing damage in human beings. See, cicadas, they don't hear with ears. They have this uh, kind of a membrane called a tympana. When they call, they have to disable their own tympana to avoid damaging themselves. Could you imagine that? Having to disable a part of yourself because another part's too powerful? human beings just don't have an equivalent to the cicadas, tympana, whatever is inside of you that persists or it fails, regardless of what you want, regardless of your intention. Which is a shame, isn't it? Because it'd be useful, right, to have that kind of control. That's what we all want. We want control. At best, we're kind of living alongside our bodies, trying to make peace with our bodies. We think that if we treat our bodies in a certain way, we can expect a certain outcome, but we don't know what to expect. I used to want to take a body and pick it apart. I thought that if I couldn't understand the whole, maybe if I saw how every piece worked in conjunction, I don't know, maybe there'd be something to that. So the first time I dissected a frog, I dismantled it entirely. I laid out every single organ side by side. I studied it. I took detailed notes. And at the end of all that, it occurred to me that this, this is not a frog. This is a corpse. See, you're like me, you're curious. You know that I'm never going to find answers to any of these questions because there is only the mystical. There are only questions. My wife, though, she has been an education for me. 
because I see in her face the way she shuts down to move forward. Nothing physical, not like the cicada, something spiritual, something emotional, something beyond my capacity to express. I thought this was some power unique to her, some sort of innate drive that only she possesses. But it's not just her, it is everyone, all the time, responding to um, the press of individual circumstances, to the, to the crush of the world. Everyone is switching on and off. They're, 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 they're crippling, they're contorting, they're shape-shifting. Why? Does this give you some kind of power? Does this lend you some sort of advantage? And I, I thought it had to be camouflage. You deny a part of yourself so you can become somebody else. So you can become anybody else. My wife doesn't want to know me in particular. She wants to put her head down. She wants to keep moving forward. Maggie's gonna do what Maggie has always done. But she can't stop what is happening. Nothing can stop what is happening. I told you that cicadas sing. Did I mention they also scream? Maybe you wouldn't call it screaming. Maybe it's more of a sign that a predator is nearby. Some sort of signal that they're already prey. The funny thing is, though, sometimes I can't tell the difference. Is that singing that I hear, or is it screaming? Maggie? What are you doing? I'm getting ready to leave. Well, where are you going? I don't know. But you can't come with me. I'm leaving you, Ben. What about the baby? I'm not having this baby. I've been living in the dark for longer than a person should, and I don't have to stay. I won't. But it won't be long before the child himself emerges from the dark. Him? Okay, I'm gonna be very direct about this. I am severing all ties with you. Let me be equally direct with you. You can't stop what is happening. You can't stop no, me. No, no, it's not about what I can and can't do. Because there are forces in motion here that are bigger than you. They're bigger than me. They're bigger than your friend. They're bigger than your desires. You got a lot of those, don't you? Don't touch me! Stop playing your goddamn mind games! You think I'm playing with you? When have you ever known me to be anything other than forthright? Shut up, shut up. Maggie, we have an opportunity here. Not just to build a home for this child, but we can build a real life together, all three of us. I had a real life before oh, come you came on, along. That's it wasn't perfect, but it was mine. I haven't been able to say that about my life in a long time. Now, a very long time. You ever really been able to say that? Oh, don't get philosophical on me. No, I'd like to know. When did this become your before and after, huh? When did this become your BC and your AD? Stop it! Did your life really belong to you more when it was full of Ben? you admit it. You know what, Maggie? You're gonna believe whatever you want to believe, huh? You've always been like no, that. No, don't you gasp at me. You heard him. You're a monster. Come on. That is hardly no, a fair no. assessment. No. You will never convince me. You will never get me to give myself over to you. Creeping into my life and latching on. I hate you. I wish you were dead. I wish you had never been born. I have undergone many births. Real? Physical birth, a birth of the body, into the body, for the body. A monster. Surely you have to recognize that the wheel of fate is turning. 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 Ben, can you hear me? How long are you gonna deny 
breath of life that grows inside you, huh? Can't you feel it growing inside you? You think you're the only woman who's ever been expecting? Because if you were paying any kind of attention, you'd realize there are many more just like you. Can't you hear them? When you close your eyes, can't you hear where the others are? Can't you feel the weight of what is coming? The weight of what is coming. 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 What do you think is gonna happen when that child is pulled screaming from between your legs? Oh. Because you are deluded if you think you're going to do anything other than offer him your breast. He's going to cry for milk, and you're going to give it to him. You're going to want to give it to him. You're going to want to hold him. You're going to want to care for him. How do I know that, Maggie? Because he's yours. Just another mouth to feed. Oh. Another mouth to feed. Another mouth to feed. Another mouth to feed. Yeah. Another mouth to feed. Another mouth to feed. Another mouth to feed. Another mouth to feed. <laughs> 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 about me. This is my way out. The cicadas. They'll be finished mating soon. And every one of them will leave behind a ghost of itself. Evidence of past lives haunting a place of transformation. Some people th think of the cicada as a symbol of rebirth or revival, but me. I have a hard time separating them from their empty shells. I'll never forget you. I was looking into Maggie's eyes, but it was like staring at a sunset. What, she go to the mini mart? <laughs> she always does this. She takes the longest errands. She's always in motion. She's always a blur. Sometimes I'm pretty sure she's considering whether or not she's going to come back. She always does. She always comes back. Not this time. I've learned to wait. You know, you can plant a seed 
But you don't know how long it's going to take to sprout. Sometimes you don't even know why you planted it in the first place. It takes patience for something to become. I can be patient. I can do better next time. I think, I think this was fun. I had fun. Hey, let's do this again sometime, huh?